Hello everybody, welcome back to another film. Um, today I'm going to bring you something a little bit different, although you know I do love my SLR cameras and I highly recommend them because they're so versatile. Um, obviously you can see from the bag this is a Minolta, but it doesn't look like it's very much of a camera. But when you look inside, you've got this thing in there. And this is a Mark One. Minolta 110 zoom SLR. Quite a strange form factor. It doesn't really look like any other camera that you've ever seen. It is a film camera and it uses 110 film. 110 film was introduced in the sort of the 70s by Kodak. Kodak seemed to introduce quite a lot of formats stop production of the film but Lomography are making the 110 film again now so um, 110 cameras may be coming back into fashion and uh, this is probably one of the better 110 cameras it has more options on it but the main advantage is it is an SLR so when you look through the viewfinder just like any other camera or 35mm or medium format it does have a mirror that flips up out of the way Looking at it you think well this is nothing special but it's got shutter speeds that range from 10 seconds all the way to a th through to a thousandth of a second. So it's pretty highly specified actually. Uh, it has a zoom lens on it as it says. It's an equivalent um, of a 50 to 100. Manual focus. Obviously you, you know, you're looking through the viewfinder you're seeing what the camera's taking. There's a zoom button there, I'll show you the camera in detail. So obviously this is our focus control here, so very nice, damped action, 40.5mm thread on the front and we have our zoom 25, there's a crop factor involved obviously because it's quite a small negative, so 25 through to 50 and it also has a macro function as well, so you can do close-ups with it. Obviously it's an SLR, so that's quite useful. Interestingly, the aperture is set over here. So this is, maximum aperture is 4.5, which is nothing to write home about. 5.6, 8, 11, 16 is the highest that it goes to. This is exposure compensation, so you can lift this up and slide it so you've got plus two, plus one, zero, and then obviously minus one stop, and minus two stops, which is an interesting way of setting exposure compensation. And got a lock to the shutter button, which is threaded for a cable release. You can turn it on there, and then it will fire once it's cocked. To cock the camera, lever underneath a hot shoe and this is your very limited selection thing here there was the B is for bulb mode you can push this in and turn it to X flash sync is at 150th of a second and if you turn it to A this is obviously automatic and it's an aperture preferred, so you set your aperture on here and it will uh, select a corresponding shutter speed. There are arrows in the viewfinder that warn you of overexposure and underexposure and points in the direction that you need to turn the aperture ring. So quite simple to use but for one of these sort of point and shoot pocket cameras quite advanced uh, tripod socket on the bottom so you can put it on a tripod uh, that way although the format I think in this is square judging from what you can see through the viewfinder on this side like I said all you have is the the wind on and cock the shutter lever this one here quite interesting design and the battery compartment on this side and this just takes two one and a half volt cells 
so SR44s etc will work fine with this it's not the old Mercury batteries and obviously straps for a, lugs for a carrying strap and this is the battery check so when you push this there should be something comes on in the uh, in the viewfinder there you, are. you can see it there there's the battery check that's also the overexposure warning so that's an overview of the camera this is what the film looks like this is an old film dating from 1995 uh, 110 24 exposures it's 200 ISO and it's color negative film so I'm assuming it's a C41 process and uh, yeah this expired in 96 so this film's over 20 years old uh, I don't want to say C41 but then this is like a consumer grade film so that's what the box looks like so this is a, a 110 cartridge So you don't actually see any film. What you see is these arrows on here. Yeah, C41 process, there we go. C41. The best results return to, and well, that's just obviously marketing stuff. And that is your, uh, your cartridge. And to load a 110 film camera, they're all the same. Here, on this particular example, you open the back you quite simply get your cartridge it drops in there like so very simple just drop your cartridge in close the door up and you just wind on and you can see in the back that the film seems to move from this the right hand side over to the left hand side and there's arrows and it also shows you frame numbers. I'm not going to use this because I'm not going to shoot this film or process it. And uh, when you get to the end, you just take this out and you send the whole thing off. It's a very easy to load um, compared to, say, a 35mm camera or a medium format uh, 120 camera. Very easy to load. I'd say the homography of a remaking 110 films now. They have a black and white, a colour negative, and also a colour slide film available. So 110 cameras are becoming uh, irrelevant again. So there you have it, folks. That is the uh, rather strange and rather beautiful, in its own kind of ugly way, Minolta 110 Zoom SLR. So there is... Uh, you can put accessories on it and there's a, a lens hood and you can do this it's got a filter on the front of it as well so there's a, a filter on here there is a filter thread so it's quite advanced really for a 110 camera very small very pocketable obviously it's a very small negative so you're not going to make 16 by 20 prints from it but yeah i thought it'd be something of interest it's another different kind of format um, sub miniature I suppose you'd call it although I've got cameras that are a lot smaller than this uh, but yeah the Minolta 110 and the 110 film format interesting that it's coming back people say film is dead but it seems to be uh, resurrected thank you very much for watching hope you found it interesting and uh, hope to see you in the next one